Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to the series I'm doing on building this big bandsaw mill. If this is your first time here, there'll be a link in the description and up in the cards to a playlist that contains all the videos that we'll bring you up to date with where we are right now. This video is sponsored by Wrangler's Riggs line of workwear. I'm currently wearing the Ranger jacket and Ranger pants, but you'll also be seeing me wear a few of the other Riggs products throughout this video. I've been wearing them for a few weeks now already working on the mill and they are definitely comfortable and durable and quite tough. I haven't been able to rip them or burn them yet, <laughs> so that's a great sign. In a future video, I'll be doing a more in-depth review of the workwear, but for now, let's get started by making this saw head go up and down. So I added these platforms on the sides of the carriage for the whole uh, acting rod and shaft system to come down and actually anchor down here. So what I have are a pair of thrust bearings. These are bearings that are designed to take forces axially, so coming straight down into the bearing this way, as opposed to regular roller bearings, which are designed to take force radially, so pressure being applied from the outside. So what I wanna do first is to create a mounting flange for this bearing. So I got a piece of uh, DOM steel with a uh, inner diameter that is pretty close to the outside diameter of the bearing so that'll be able to hold the bearing in position and I'll create a little mounting plate for them out of this extra piece of half inch stock. So now I have my bearing holder, which is gonna go down there. And now I need to run a rod all the way up to the top of the carriage so the saw head can move up and down on that. Now I could have gone and got a eight foot section of Acme rod, but that is a lot more expensive and a lot harder to find. So what I'm gonna do is basically just make extensions onto this to take up the space that doesn't actually need to travel. So for instance, on the bottom here, there's no reason why I need a threaded area that goes all the way down to the bottom of the carriage because that would allow the saw head to go down past the, the, be the bed, which doesn't make any sense because then the blade can't do anything. And what I'm end up doing here is this fits into the dom tube with just a little bit of play. I got a tube with a wall thickness of 15, 30 seconds. So the inside here is one inch and a 30 second. So the shaft slides into the dom tube and then I'll weld it so I'm just protruding a little bit so that it doesn't quite pass all the way through this bearing so it doesn't bottom out. And the bearing can go right on there. And all of the bearing surface is up here on the top of the bearing from the DOM tube, transferred directly from the Acme rod. So I should have enough stock here to make two of these things, one for each side. So let's get cutting. So now I'm going to drill some holes into the tube so I can plug weld the round stock inside of it and I'm just going to grind a few flats on here just to make starting the drill bit a bit easier. So I started drilling these holes and I got one of the drill bits stuck in the chuck of the drill press and I can't get it out and I am sick of messing with it. So I resort to the uh, the old fashioned cordless drill, once again. I don't know how old fashioned this to be honest. It's actually pretty recent. <laughs> So I know the diameter on this is just slightly too big to go into the coupler. 
So before I continue going ahead with the welding, I'm gonna take this over to the lathe and then just sand this just a little bit just to get it down a little bit so it fits into the coupler. It's pretty close, it's not gonna take much uh, material removal to actually fit down in here. So I was able to get the coupler fitting nicely onto the shaft. I actually ended up switching to using a file because the sandpaper was just taking too long to cut this. Um, but I got a nice fit now. Now I'm going to go ahead and start cutting a keyway into my shaft for the keystock. I'm going to do that with a grinder and a cutoff wheel. This doesn't have to be super perfect. Uh, I just need the key to fit down into it somehow. Why I didn't attach to these while the beam was upside down is beyond me. So I have the same problem on both sides. I should have made the clearance holes on top bigger to account for any misalignment of these two holes. So I need to remove material from this side of the hole to give this rod some clearance to come over this way so that the nut is in the right position to go into the block. So I'm gonna grab my die grinder. I think I have it somewhere. And I'm just going to remove some of this material out here just to give this some more clearance. And this is taking way too long, so I'm switching to a cutoff wheel in the grinder.
So with the bottom area of the mechanism complete, I can start working on the top mechanism. And that's going to start with a coupler. It's going to couple the acne rod to another shaft up top. And for that shaft, I have some inch and a half magnet. I have some inch and a half diameter shaft stock that I'm going to use for that. And that's going to run up into a pillow block bearing at the very top uh, part of the carriage. I still have to figure out the offset out from the carriage this bearing needs to be mounted at. So I'll figure that out. And then up there as well, I'll be mounting the sprockets for the chain, which will link the two uh, Acme rods together. And then after that, I can add a motor and see this thing go up and down. Okay, while I'm up here, I'm gonna measure the length for the shaft that I'm gonna need, just to get an idea. I'm gonna run it a little long right now in case I need the extra space to run a sprocket or something on the top of the carriage. But I think I should have plenty of room in here to make everything work. So let's see. If I cut maybe a 12 inch section, that'll put me about four inches above the top of the carriage and I can always trim that back later. And while I'm up here, I might as well install this coupler. Uh, I'm not cutting a keyway into these Acme rods just yet. The coupler seems to be grabbing it just fine, so I don't know if I'm even gonna, gonna cut one or not. All right, let's go cut some shaft. So now I can try and figure out what the distance from the top of the bearing to the carriage needs to be so I can make up that spacer that's gonna have to go up there, or I guess that mounting block or whatever. So looking at these, I need to make sure that these rods are somewhat vertical. I haven't bolted the bottoms down yet because I'm gonna run this thing up and down a few times. Once I have it hooked up to make sure the rods are parallel, and then I'll bolt them down to the base there. So I'm just gonna take a look at this one over here on the left side of the mill, just to figure out how far off of vertical it is or how far off of parallel to the carriage it is and kind of go from there. So down here with my little spacer thing, I got about a half inch. So let me see what it's like up there. It looks like it moves closer. Yes. So up here it's touching. So it needs to come out a half inch from where it is right now. So if I leave that, in position and then measure this gap up here and add a half inch, that should get me there. So nice. So if I make that one and three eighths, that should do it. So I have this piece of two inch square stock that I'm gonna to use to make the bearing mounts. So what I'm planning to do, I have enough stock here for both sides. So I'll cut this in half to two nine inch long sections and then I'll end up just splitting this thing down so that's an inch and three eighths wide and that'll be my mounting block. I'll be able to weld this directly up to the, the carriage. And I think what I'm also going to do is I have all this extra bar stock anyway, so I'm gonna cut a piece that fits inside of here on the inside so that when I tap the holes for the bearings, there'll be a little bit more meat for those threads to grab onto.
So I was really hoping to end this video with this saw head moving up and down on the rods, but if you follow me over on Instagram, you know I've had pretty much every problem I could possibly have getting that thing to work. <laughs> Not so much for that. So I have a new plan and in the future we'll do a video on getting the uh, thing motorized and also share all of the hardships that I went through at uh, last night and the night before and the day before that as well because it's been quite a trying process. <laughs> but again, I'd say a big thank you to Wrangler Riggs Workwear for sponsoring this video. Look for a future video where I'll be sharing my thoughts on this workwear and my experiences and all that fun stuff. So, thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the saw or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking. Oh, the weather's changing. Oh boy.